these are all the applications that sit within the cube suite, the actual desktop product that you install. So you've got the Voyager strategic modeling, Avenue for dynamic traffic assignment, uh, Cubeland, Cube Cargo, and Dynasim. We've got the macro, meso, micro. We can do trip based, tour based, activity based models, multimodal. I mean, it doesn't matter what the mode is, you, you can program it in. We've got transport, obviously, freight, land use. We do highlight the powerful matrix estimation that had a quite a big overhaul uh, with analyst drive, uh, very, very powerful, very fast, and that can do static, static and dynamic matrix estimation. The unlimited scenario management tool, and I'll cover the interface of Cube in a minute which also covers the, the flow chart. The third party application support is also particularly useful to a lot of our users, as is the scripted methodology, which means we can bring in any methodology into Cube, which has been particularly useful when looking at the new modes of transport, such as the e-mobility um, and autonomous vehicles. Okay, so this is the Cube interface. So this is the flow chart. The software, when you run it, goes from um, goes through the steps here, step one, step two, three, four, five. You can recognize this as a four step model. Behind each of these boxes is another level of uh, programs. They're all programs are grouped into the tasks that they're performing. So this is the initialization step and it's just getting the getting the data ready to go through the uh, the modeling process. This is a program. So this is now the highway program. We've got public transport and we have all the other programs listed at the top here in the ribbon interface. So the way this is structured is we have the input files on the left and we have the output files on the right. And these can be drag and dropped um, and linked up to the output from one can be linked up to the input of another program. So it's very quick to, to build up a model as you go through. So this is where the Voyager scripting comes in. Um, You'll see some similar similarities with other scripting languages, but it is its, its own language in its own right. If I go back then, so that's the script which controls how these input files are going to be used. And then you have the reports here. And this lists all the information that the, the program's going through. So all the messages, all the sort of totals, if, you look, if, if, if you've got matrices, um, any warning messages, whether they're fatal or not fatal, um, and then the all important return code at the end uh, and and time it's taken to elapse. If I come back up, we can see how the the output of one of these applications and you can see it's going into the input of the loop and then we click on the output of the loop and you can see these boxes go round. In terms of outputs, then uh, we have the Arc GIS Arc engine in here, so it's a, a, a light version of ArcMap. So you within the ArcGIS interface, you start to see some um, tools which you'd recognize in ArcMap. And we get to bring in the Esri background maps as well. Um, I think the, all these are self-explanatory sort of bandwidths, volumes, um, map of intersection, level of service. And of course you can display uh, zones as well. So we, this is the, from the land use model. So there's the types of uh, outputs you can get from Cube. Um, over here on the left, we have our scenario manager. This is where you can simply right click, add a child uh, and create a new scenario. And you can do that as many times as you want. So you can create tens or hundreds of scenarios. Uh, each time you create a scenario, you have to define the inputs or the parameters defined to that scenario. Now, when you create it, it will automatically inherit that from its parent. Um, so that would obviously produce the same result. So you can then go in and change those parameters. Now, these have been set up by the model developer. So these are not standard or default. You do have some such as the, the scenario name is default because you've entered that and the location of where it's stored on the computer. Um, but otherwise, you, you create these inputs and they, they're like global parameters, global, we call them catalog keys, but they're, they're parameters you can access from anywhere within the model. Um, and you can have any number of these and you can split them by pages if you like as well. So next we have the data panes. This is a, a set structure of inputs, outputs and reports, and you can choose what is represented in here. So it's not everything from the model. It's just those, those sort of outputs that you want handy quickly. So the developer can set this up so that a model applier can come in and who doesn't want to 
have to search around and find particular files and they get quick access. So these are actually the files I opened up here earlier. So they're already, they've got templates behind them. They, up, they upload the, the data each time. So if you're looking at a different scenario, it will upload the data behind that scenario. So that's nice and quick and you can do comparisons, um, et cetera, and reports. This app pane is a bit like a, a Windows Explorer, file explorer. This is showing you the, the layout of the model. So at the moment, we're in the Voyager demonstration model, which is a four-step model. We've also got a land use transport interaction demo, um, cube cargo. So this is you know, everything that the user might want to look at. And this is a particularly useful um, demonstration model because it's got an example for almost every type of, of modeling. And down here in the, at the bottom of the keys, and these are the ones we saw earlier with the scenarios, it's just a different way of seeing it. Um, and these can change based on the scenarios. As I click through them, you'll see them change. So I, if I just de demonstrate bringing in a network model, so that's coming here, we can choose a template if we want. So there's already some templates loaded up of things you might want to do. We can cancel that and just use it as it is. And I'm just wanting to demonstrate um, linking in a, a, a file from one to the other is, is that easy. You then go into the description, say what you want to do with that file, and then you can right click and, and auto name, for example, or, or move from there. So this is where you can bring in third party programs. Uh, and you can have virtually anything in here. Um, I've got something set up called Saturn. This, but you can see in here, um, I had a, a, a Kubeland 2 demo uh, beta, which was we were testing, and there's a couple of DOS things in here. And if I go back to the PowerPoint, then actually you'll see a demonstrating the fact you could have any sort of user program in here. And when you go through and create these user programs, you can define which inputs you want to bring in and which outputs it can create. And they could be a, a matrix format that could be CSV, you know, so it's you can have that drag and drop functionality. It can be in your workflow um, and to all intents and purposes, you don't need to open up that other software necessarily. It can just run through automatically if it has that capability. We've got a, a cube training portal. There's 10 courses on there. They range from 90 minutes to six hours and they're free to select users, which is the Bentley term for those people who are under maintenance contracts. These are all sort of uh, introduction to cube, public transport, uh, advanced coding, DTA, uh, cluster, etc. Um, we have a mobility page for cube street lytics and legion. This is where we have everything. Um, so it's a wiki, which is kind of like a, an index of tips and tricks and uh, information guidance, not documentation as such. It's, it's a little bit more specific. We have documentation elsewhere. There's a forum so users can come on, ask questions. Um, and other people can answer them, although uh, Bentley support uh, do moderate that quite a bit. And then we have the blog, which we can send out interesting articles, user examples uh, and updates, etc. Thank you.